Hey, what's up? My name is Dairo, and you are watching Toasted. Dairo, welcome to Amsterdam Dance Event. Thank you. 2016, right? Already. It's my fourth year. Your fourth year? My fourth ADE. Hey, it's already 21 years of ADE. Um, did you recall the first time you ever heard of it? The first time I ever heard of it was when I met Hardwell for the first time. When I found out he played my songs and like, he wanted to meet me. I think he was doing a show at Club Home. And he invited me, he's like, I want to meet you. So I went down there and it was like a small club, like smaller than this, like really small. He wasn't even in the DJ mag at that time. And it was, it was a lot of fun, you know, meeting him and like he was one of my heroes back then. So yeah, that's actually when I heard about AD for the first time because I wasn't really in the dance music world. I was just like mostly a producer. So that's when I got into AD and then like I ended up signing with his management and working with him a lot. And then like AD became part of the culture, like it's something you do every year. So yeah, I've been around for four, maybe even five. Maybe this is even the fifth year. Is it an important thing for a DJ to be here? Do you do a lot of business as well? Um, it's mostly, uh, let me give you an example. So right now I sign with a new management in LA and they don't have any reason to come here other than if everybody that they want to talk to is here at the same time in the same place. That's why AD is good because every promoter is here, every agent is here from anywhere around the world. So for everybody it's worth it to, to pay for a flight ticket to come here. So my manager is here for the first time to meet my entire team, to meet my family, like my tour manager, everybody I work with. And that's why AD is good. It's such a good meeting place, such a cute hub where everybody can just like meet face to face, like put a face to an email address. And like, it just helps business wise, but also for new artists, because there's so many artists in town at the same time at one particular place. I remember I was playing Lady Big Luke's party yesterday and I was thinking like, it's very smart to throw your birthday party right before ADE because everybody's going to be in town. So he invited his favorite DJs. And so Armin was there, Hardware was there, I was there, Dimitri Vegas, like was were there. So like yeah, it's super smart because everybody is here. And because everybody is here, there's a very high chance that you would run into anybody on the street. So if you are uh, like an upcoming producer or you're making music or you wanna like, you know, get get your music shown to anybody, come to Amsterdam and like have your USB sticks ready, because like we are walking around the street here. Me too, and I know a lot of other DJs are as well. And that's why this is such a good thing. So definitely that's the way it works. I mean, you should promote your music by giving it to DJs. Is that how you did it? That's uh, not necessarily. It's a way to do it. I take that more seriously than looking through a demo email address because you, you do not want to know the shit we get sent on the demo email address. It's really hard to search through a lot of emails to find just one good song. Like a lot of times when I get a, a USB stick, it's actually good, right? It doesn't mean that I would sign it or if I think it fits the label, but it's usually 10 times better than anything we get on the demo email address. I've signed songs from USB 6 way more than I've signed songs from email addresses. So in that sense, yeah, it's way better to be around here and like give you give your USB stick to people. Hey, you were talking, of course, about uh, Layback Luke's uh, birthday, the 40th birthday. He was actually one of the guys, the first DJs to really recognize your talent, right? He was the very first. It's cool. You, it's cool you know that. He was the very first guy to recognize me because I was on the Labic Luke forum. I was just like a music enthusiast, mostly production enthusiast, just like giving feedback and like receiving feedback. It was like a cool community of people. And a lot of DJs actually started there from like um, Afrojack and like Avicii started there and everybody. So I was always on there and um, you know, Labic Luke had his like, his, um, his thread where you could send him music and he would comment on it. So I was like, okay, I'll try it for one. So I sent him a song. I didn't get any feedback back, but I got a contract back. Like, I want to sign a song from you. Oh, shit, really? Yeah, and it was really cool. So he was the first guy that was actually like, I really like your music, I want to release it. So I released a couple songs in his label, and then I started working together with Loopers. It's also one of the guys on my label right now, like already five years ago, and we released like collaborations on Luke's label. And Luke really pushed both of us, and I eventually, right off with Hardwell and he put me like, on the next level like touring with him, especially him being the number one DJ. And uh, now I'm uh, just trying to do the same thing for Loopers right now, you know? And uh, But yeah, he was the first one to actually acknowledge me and like help me. Actually, uh, a lot of people are wondering why uh, Dutch DJs are so popular and a lot of people say there must be something here in the water. 
but apparently, I mean, you just gave it away. Dutch DJs do help each other a lot, right? I mean, you play each other's music, you start labels like yourself to promote Dutch music. I, I, I firmly believe that the Dutch among each other are actually helping each other and actually super supporting uh, amongst each other. I've heard like, I don't want to insult anybody, but I've heard stories about like Italian DJs like basically hating each other. It's like a full on competition. But like in Holland, we don't feel it that way. It's it's somewhat a competition, but like a healthy competition. But like, I would never screw any of my mates that are Dutch, you know? And like, I feel like the Dutch people are just helping each other. And in that, in that sense, we're a step ahead of everybody, you know, because we're helping everybody. We're using each other's resources and it helps every every single one of us, you know, because everybody's asking us, so what's about the Dutch? And that's helping all of us, you know, at the same time. So, yeah. Hey, um, you were signed to many labels yourself. Uh, one of them was Def Jam, I saw. How did you get in touch with them and what song did you produce for them? I think I did a remix for Rihanna at that time. So, uh, yeah, they asked me to do a remix for Rihanna. To be honest, I wasn't really proud of the remix that I did. I think I could have done better, but like there was a lot of time pressure. So, you know, a lot of times when you get remixes, they're like, this is the deadline, you have to make it at, in time. And then like, you're like, okay, well, this is what I did. And then they, they decide if they release it or not, right? Uh, but still, very. I feel very honored to have done a, a remix for Def Jam, you know? Pretty awesome. Def Jam hey, is like a huge label. Um, where should people go during ADE? Because, I mean, there's a lot of shit going on, but are there some especially cool parties that you should go, actually, if you can get in? Yeah. Um, well, it all depends what, what type of uh, person you're, why you're attending. For instance, if you're a DJ, you're an aspiring DJ. If you're a music fan. If you're a music fan. Uh, it all depends. There's a really cool Osla show tonight as well, but like I have my show tonight too, so you know, we have Valentina playing. It's the headliner at Osla here as well, so you know, I don't know. But like, I mean, there's a there's a review party tomorrow night at uh, I think the Hanukkah Music Hall, and uh, I will always support those guys to death. Um, and of course, Amsterdam Music Festival. If you don't want to spend a lot of money, you want to see everybody at the same time, just get a ticket to Amsterdam Music Festival and you see everybody. Hey, um, I read, and I don't know if this is true, but you were studying while you were playing as a DJ as well. And during your tour, you would fly back to do an exam. Is that true? Yeah, so I broke through when I was 19 years old. And I went on tour when I was 19 years old. And I was doing an engineering study. And it was in my fourth year, my exam years. And I basically broke through and really soon, like, like, the, the opportunities are there thrown at you and like you're in such like I don't know you're in a whole different world and there's so much opportunities and like you're starting to realize like this whole study thing is it, I'm not I'm never gonna do anything with this ever again so that I realized it really soon so I stopped caring but like I always I also had my parents I had the answer to you know you're 19 years old like they paid for my study so like out of respect I'd fly home do an exam and fly back like Sometimes from America, six hours to do one exam for an hour and then fly six hours back. Sometimes even ten hours. And that's how I lived for like a year straight. And obviously I failed. Um, but eventually I did get my, uh, my degree, my piece of paper, because my mom really wanted me to and my dad, obviously. Um, but I never did anything with it. <laughs> well, still a lot of respect. Hey, um, you started your own label, Wolf. Uh, why did you start your label? I guess not just to promote other artists, but to push your own music as well, right? Well, the thing is, like, I've been with Revealed since I was 19 years old. And um, no disrespect, but I've always been told kind of what to make, how to be placed in a box. Like, you know, I made a lot of music, a lot of music got rejected, and I could only release a Revealed. I wasn't, like, stuck to Revealed, but it was like a disrespect thing if I release anything else anywhere. So it was always really hard. And I didn't feel that like artistic freedom that I would want to feel. And like, for instance, the, all the artists that are signed on my label right now, are, I completely give them all the all the artistic freedom that they want, you know. And that's what I would have wanted at that time. And that's that's one of the reasons I wanted complete artistic freedom. I wanted to decide when I release a song, and I wanted to decide exactly what I wanted to release when I wanted to release it. And also, you know, look, Hardwell did so much for me in the beginning by giving me a stage, like releasing on his label. And it's, this is kind of my chance to give back, you know, to all those guys. 
So, you know, and there's a lot of ten, talent walking around that doesn't get the right chances and opportunities that are like in a really niche thing that I kind of like feel like linked to, you know, I feel like I'm in the same niche. So for me, this is a chance to help them too. Who are the Bali Bandits? I mean, that's a, for me an outstanding name of one of the guys, you, one of the, the acts that you sign on your label. Yeah, that, those are like two guys we signed in the beginning. I, I think eventually they moved to uh, Revealed. So then I'll re release them on Revealed. But I mean, you, you listen to music, it, you like it, and you offer people oh, like yeah. a deal? Or? So, so what happened is they came to my show, I think two years ago, during uh, Amsterdam Dance events. They gave me a CD. And uh, and it's the same story. Like this, the CDs or USB sticks I get are usually good songs. And I listened to it, I was like, this is great, but I want to do... I like I hear some things that I want to do with it, so like I asked them like to send me the stems, and like I made a remix of it, and we released it on my label, and eventually like they developed their sound, and their sound eventually is better for revealed or for my label, so they moved to revealed, which is completely understandable. That happens. Hey, um, what holds the future for you? I mean, the year's almost ending. Of course, probably the best party of the year is New Year's Eve. Do you have any ideas where you're playing yet? I think I'm doing a show in Prague, if I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I can confirm that yet, but... <laughs> <laughs> when, is, when is this interview coming out? <laughs> Tomorrow. <laughs> so yeah, possibly, uh, there's an option for uh, for Prague. I'm not sure if they confirmed it, but uh might be playing in Prague. <laughs> hey, I <laughs> Yeah. I was uh, I was listening and checking your uh, your social media. There's uh, one track, obviously not finished, that starts off with like a Gregorian male choir almost evolves into uh, a didgeridoo song sound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fuck, man, that that's eclectic stuff. Yeah, I felt I felt sometimes I have these feelings and these ideas, and I, I just start messing around, like searching like different like recordings and sample packs, and I was like. And there's like vibe of like like Tibetan to the Tibetan monks and like different like focal things and just starting putting things together and like I made this thing and then I was like oh this is really cool and I actually made a song of it that I finished so uh, it turned out really cool. When uh, when can people uh, buy it or where can they find it? It's always really hard to say. You know, I, I took a little break this year because my last release was in February. Also with me, I took a, I uh, took a, I hired a whole new team for my management. So it's kind of like starting from the bottom again, like building everything up, like doing everything new. Um, we hope to release a new song this year to start with, but I have like eight songs ready. So, so you'll release an album probably. I don't believe in albums anymore. I don't, because like I see people making albums being off the radar for a year. They release an album, and then the day after, the, their same fans are like, "So what's the next thing? What's coming up next?" And then like, in my opinion, you just wasted a year. So and it's uh, that's just the. But it, but it could be an artistic effort to release an album. I mean, if you have eight songs that fit really well together, yeah. you might as well release them at once. But then I feel like you, you should be on a level as an artist where you could do that. I feel like I'm still like on my way up. I'm not like. Not, I, I don't consider myself a household name yet to do something like that. So I want to like keep my cards open and like just you know go for certainty and like take a risk like that. So, but we can expect new music from you, right? Uh, hopefully this year at least one, and then ne next year uh, once a month is the plan. So we're gonna like force feed people my music for a year straight. So it's gonna be a good year. That's what we're hoping for. Hey, one last question. Why do you have a picture of you carrying an axe on your social media? <laughs> I don't know. It was a, we did a photo shoot. I wanted to do something different. So we went to this abandoned factory in Germany. And uh, I don't know. I think what we got it from was a mix of, I think, uh, a, a video clip of, of, uh, of Kanye West and some like Rick Owens commercials like mixed together and we use it for our for my photo shoots great imagery but I mean it is more something you'd expect for a black metal band kind of right <laughs> like we are a niche like it we're like I consider myself the black metal band of EDM <laughs> thanks so much for your time Thank you.